Greetings. I am Shell from the Chicani people, or Chicani, however you want to pronounce it. <laughs> welcome, I, Shell. Thank you welcome. for coming. Welcome, here, Shell. I'm only here for a brief moment because I do want to say something to you. I just want to say thank you for all that you are doing to help with your own ascension. Remember that unconditional love is a term that's used freely but is not always acted upon freely. Unconditional love is so difficult because if there are those around the world, especially now in your day and age in this third dimension, there's always been there's always been that element of darkness on your planet. And it's very strong in, in some places like the Middle, Middle East and in, in some areas of the world where it's very, there's a lot of famine and things of that nature. There's much darkness. But when you see that and you can unconditionally love even the people that are wrong, wrong, which you consider wrong, because there is really no wrong and right. There's only negative and positive. So when you see the negative, love the person anyway. Does that make sense to you? I know you get tired of hearing the mushy love. Love, love, love. Everybody talks about the love, but it is so important to keep the ascension alive and well and draw people in. Now, we can talk about the negative things as well. And it becomes very interesting because the dark gets darker and the light gets lighter. When we have the dualistic world that we're in, it, it offsets each other, the balance. Do you understand that? But eventually, yes. eventually that does not have to happen. But in the way that things are moving now, the dark is getting darker, the light is getting lighter, and it's moving so that the light, see, watch my hands. The light will be on top over the darkness, and then you will have them as overcoming. Does that make sense to you? But right now, it is sort of even. But as it moves, as the ascension rises, then you will be overcome the darkness. So, it is an interesting concept for you because there has always been negative and positive on your planet. Always in pretty much balance, you would say. Because look at your society. Look at the way things are happening in your world. Is it really very positive? Is it really very negative? There is negative and positive mixed all together in your society. And people look at things differently because of that. And so the negative and the positive will come to terms with one another. And that's what I wanted to tell you about today. Because I congratulate some of you, most of you, for continuing to connect in a very positive way. Now, there are some of you out there, and I, do, I, I know who you are, you know who you are, that do not connect in a very positive way, but you know that, that you should. So that's all I say. Continue to connect in a very positive way, a loving surrounding. Love each other no matter whether or not you believe they are of a, a good vibration. You, you need to connect with them anyway because that will bring them in to a different connection. Do you understand that? Your friction, your friction that you give off affects others. It always has and always will. Always has and always will. And that is what I wanted to say to you today. You affect others. Your positivity will affect others. Anything that you say or do will affect others. It affects the atmosphere. And in fact, you can go into a room, and if you are in a negative mood, you can change the, the mood of the room if, if you are strong enough. But you could also change it for the positive. If you go into a negative room and become, and you are a positive light, do not let it squelch you, but just send out your energy and it will help improve the atmosphere of a room. It can do that. So that's how it works in the world. You send it out, you send it out, 
and it connects with others. It has to. Your fourth dimensional energy is awake, and it connects. So if, if there's someone in the room causing much negative energy, then you can try and send it out. You don't have to say a word. Send out whatever positive energy you can to help them and to help those people that are affected by them. Oh, you may not see it right away, but it does happen. It will happen that you are affecting the change. Be part of the good change. Not walking into a room and making it negative, but walking into a room and raising the spirit of the room. It happens. It happens. It happens. So be aware of how strong you are as an individual because goodness and Light energy is so much stronger than negative energy. It may come across as being stronger because it hits you harder. It's a facade. It's that strong ah, that hits you is only a facade because you get behind it, you can get to the source. Does that make sense to you? It tries to hit you hard to bring you down so that you do not affect it. But you can. You can affect it. And you will affect it. Um, yes, Shell. How do you, you know, as we observe all the negative things that are happening in the world, yes. what is the best way to observe it and keep your vibrations because you know at times it's it's difficult when you see certain things happening in the world. Yes, because it affects you were brought up to be affected by things. And that is good. That's not necessarily a bad thing. You are affected by negative energy, you are affected by positive energy. You see things, you call them wrong and right, I call them positive and negative. You bring you understand what they are, but when you Look at it. See that that it can have a positive outcome. Pray for a positive outcome for anything that is negative. Now, you must love the people that are doing these negative things as well. Because if you do not, then you are spreading negativity. You will you will be negative toward them and that spreads negativity. But if you love them, you do not have to love their actions. I'm sure some of you heard that before. Oh, I don't like their actions, but I love the person. But then they go ahead and treat the person like their negative action. They, they don't treat them as a person. They treat them as the negative that they, they perceive in them. That is not the way it's done. You have to find the positive in the person, even though they may be confused and they may have many, many dark shadow energies in them. You must bring out with your prayers, with your understanding, with your thoughts, bring out as much goodness toward them as you can because it affects the world. Now, there is so much negativity pointed at them right now that they have power beyond imagination. People are saying negative things about them. They are pointing fingers at them. They are making their negativity five times stronger because they are they're pointing negative. They're giving them more negative energy. Does that make sense to you? Yes. The positive energy, it brings down the negative energy. And they will not be able to do the horrible things that they are doing because you are changing their energy. Does that make any sense to anyone? Yes. Very yes. good. It makes sense. Change their energy. Do not feed their energy. Change their energy. Okay. Do not feed their energy. There, so that's how I say it. Can we okay. ask questions? Go ahead, Jesse. Ah. Hey, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, awesome. I just want to say this is my first webinar, so thank you guys for having me. I really appreciate it. <laughs> um, I guess my question was actually about our prison system. I've really yes. felt drawn to working with our prison system, and it's. I live in America where our country is very based on punitive action and punishing those who've 
uh, committed crime. So I'm kind of curious how you see the evolution of our prison system, especially when you compare it to places that are more progressive and enlightened, like Norway or some of the under, other Scandinavian countries. It just really bothers me, and I, I'm curious to learn your perspective. Yes, it will all change, but learn this about your prison system. Whenever there's such negativity brought together, what happens? In your prison system, you have many of those that are so down that they cannot, they do not see a light at the end of the tunnel. But then, what happens? Many light, positive things happen in prison. There are prayer groups. There become Christians there, or enlightened there, or writers there. There is positive things that come out of it. Let's feed those positive things, that feed the positivity in those individuals, so that they can come out, and when they look at the light, it actually means something to them. When they look at the world, it actually is better for them. But many times they are pushed into such a dark place in the prison system that they do not see any of that light. But then you cannot stay in that dark situation forever. Either you, you are going to kill yourself or you're going to find something positive. And let's send positive energy to the prisons because, once again, it changes... People. Do not send them negative energy. That just gives them more negative. Send them positive energy. And I like what you said about the other systems you know, on your planet. Yes, some other systems are much better. They bring about change for the positive, and they bring about understanding of, of how to be a better person. That is not happening in the United States system. There is some places where there is some <clears throat> there is some of that happening, but it is not in abundance. It is not in abundance, and there are places where the churches go into the 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 prisons and things of that nature. But that's sometimes not a good thing because they preach down to people. You have to preach up to them and love them. You can't say, "Oh, you're a bad person," but we love you anyway. We Yes, you can, but it's, they don't do it in the right way. They have to take the love and reach out with it instead of just giving them words. You understand what I'm saying? They give them a bunch of words, but they do not give them their love. They give them their words, but you have to give them their love, your love, and that is what changes people. When they see love in somebody else that's being given to them, how do you feel? How does anybody feel when they see that they are being accepted? When they are being loved, this activates positivity. I know, I'm giving you a bunch of words, but I'm also giving you my love. Thank you so much. <laughs> does that make sense to you? Yeah, it does. It's, um, it is negative can be fought with negative and you really I just think it's really fascinating because you know prisoners are seen as the most we dehumanize them in the United States so often and people who commit murders or commit crimes of great heinousness I guess you would say they seem to lose their humanity in our system and I think it's really important to extend compassion and understand oh, yes. them yeah they are still human there is still part of them that is the flame that was born into them. That spirit that is surrounded by flesh can be so tiny at times. What you need to do is feed that flame of love and goodness and spirit and not feed the, fl feed the rest of the negativity, but feed that flame that is their soul. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> Um, Shell, what about when it comes to um, negativity that's coming from a person that's sick? How do you best deal with that so that you're compassionate 
um, but you don't get wrapped up in the pain that they're feeling at that moment? Excellent question. First, you protect yourself, and and then you protect them because okay. Um, but you know what? Sometimes it's better to protect them first. And let me give you a, an example of that. When you're on an, one of your airplanes and the oxygen masks come down, you do not put yours on first, do you? Yes, you do. Yes, you, yes, you do. do. But then you put it on. Uh, you put yours on so that you will survive, correct, and help others. Yes. So you protect yourself. Protect yourself first, and then you protect the others. Because if you have a child with you, you will have to put that on the child, just like the sick person. But second of all, you give them positive energy, you give them love, you tell them how much you before they have a chance to Uh, I think he was muted. Hold on. Hold on. Hello? Okay, now we can hear you. What happened? Jesse muted you by mistake. <laughs> oh. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. I thought I just muted you for me because I needed to step away for a second. Sorry about that. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I have a did you hear anything that I said? <laughs> no, we, we, no, we we left off as you protect yourself and you protect then you, you protect yourself and then you protect who is with you. You can protect them first, but yourself is the most important because you are the one bringing the positive energy. Protect yourself with white light. Yes, protect yourself in any way that you find is useful to you. Now, some people put a white light on, but they don't use it. Meaning that they, they in the morning, they wake up and say, oh, I put a white light on, but they don't even think about what they're doing. When you do a protection on yourself, you must understand that you there is some thought that you must put into it. That some, some things that you must put into it, like what a, thank you thank you God for giving me protection thank you God for or or whatever entity that you speak of that is higher than yourself that is protecting you and some people have different ways of doing it but it it must not be a mindless thing it must be something that you actually think about this is protection for the day. There's many things you might run into. There's many people that may want to cause you harm. So you must understand that protection is important in the, in the day. So put your protection on, protect those around you, and be the first to speak positively. If you go to the hospital, and they are laying in bed, and you come into the room, you should be the first to speak. You should say, hello, how are you? I love you. I hope you are feeling better today. Give them a bunch of positive energy right away. Right away. You see, on our world, positive energy is more abundant in some ways. And so we are able to affect that situation more abundantly. You see pain and, and, and things of that nature of negative things do exist, however we know how to bring them out of them much easier because of the dimensional aspects and our technology is much higher as well. So, um, but dimensional aspects are important. But you must be the first to bring something positive to that room. When you walk into that room, energize that room with your positive energy. Like I mentioned before, put your positive energy into a room when you walk into it. It does make a difference. Yeah, I, I mean, normally what I try and do is talk about something funny or that to, to sort of get what they have in their mind. But then they end up going back to everything that they have and all the symptoms and listing everything. 
Uh, and then if sometimes if you if you don't allow them to speak about it, it's like you're ignoring the pain that they're feeling. Do you do you know what I mean? It is it is your place to acknowledge that you understand that they have pain, and that 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 if they want to talk about that pain a little bit, that is okay. Let me tell you why. Because you are protected. You are protected from that negativity. If you come into a room and you have put positivity into the room, they can say whatever they want. Your positivity is still bringing the, the room up. But, and it is going to diminish what they have to say. It's going to, it, they're not going to want to speak about that as much. They may speak about it, but if the more positive you are, perhaps you will be able to reach them. Now there are some, I know, that they talk about their their health constantly. That is like their major subject on your planet. Oh, I have this, I have that, and I have the other thing. I, I'm going <laughs> here and I have a pa I'm a patient with so and so and so and so. And uh, uh, my son's a doctor too and he takes care of me. But uh, there are many Many people who like to talk about the negative, but when you throw a positive energy into the room, it makes it much harder to talk about the negative. <laughs> Believe it or not. Believe it or not. It makes it harder to talk negative if someone else is very, a very positive. But um, that rule doesn't always apply, but for many people it does. Okay, thank you. There are those that are dwelling in negativity that if they see a positive person, they just want to shut them down. You've run into those people too, correct? Yes, yes. So, <laughs> it happens. They say, so, what is he happy about? Yeah. They do not want to be around because they're, they do not want positivity. They do, they do not work well with it <laughs> because it is just not who they are at that time. But those are the people that you want to run from in some way. So, but still fill the room with positivity, it may, but it makes them crazy. Okay, thank you. Ruth has a question. Hello, Shell. Hello! <laughs> I call myself Safira when I'm not calling myself Ruth. <laughs> it's my spiritual name. And yes. I have two questions. One is, what kind of illnesses both physical and mental, do you have in your dimension, if any? How do you heal them? And yes. the other question is a little bit different. What do you do when you're not here with us? And are you involved in helping prevent earth calamities like Grupfignerias? Do you work with them on that? Um, let me answer the second one first, since it's the closest. Okay. Um, I study earth in my spare time and I am interactive in other places other than just here with you. I have other people that I do channel with and I do but not in this on this level. But I do in my world do much study of how Earth is moving in their ascension and if I see problems I report them to Grok here. If I and I also I'm a spiritual leader on my planet. Bashar is way a much greater figure than I. He's older and wiser and has much more information. But here I am to help you as much as I can. Now, the first question was what? What kind of illness is both mental uh, and spiritual? Of course, on all planets there's microbes viruses and organisms and things that affect even fourth and fifth and sixth dimensions there can be uh, different uh, things that are dimensional illnesses there is um, what you would call mental illnesses as well but we can help them very easily with in many ways so with technology and with uh, counseling that is very positive and also, um, there are some forms of cancer 
Now, cancer on in our dimension is not the same. It is more external than internal. So it, it affects the outside of the body, but it's still very... It's uh, There is some internal, but not very much. It's mostly external. Mm -hmm. So things like that. I, I don't really want to dwell on illnesses and things of that nature, but um, yes, we do have some. How do you heal them? In which, which well, mechanics do you have? Te yeah, technology. Also, uh, we do uh, RNA treatments, which at, when you are born, you get an RNA outlook and a DNA outlook, and then uh, from that perspective, we can tell if there's something, if you go to the doctor, they do an RNA outlook and a DNA outlook, and if there's something changed within the RNA or DNA, it's usually on, it's because there's an illness or something of that nature. And mm -hmm. so our, our RNA and DNA is affected by illness. So that's the first thing they do is do a scan on that. And then if there is something in the RNA or DNA that should not be there, it is removed. Now, can you, yes. Uh, excuse me. Can you do healing for us on Earth as well if we ask you? Well, we do not have that. Well, we do have the technology. We are not allowed to interact in that way according to the laws of our people at this mm -hmm. point because it can be, it can change how you move forward in your life. And that is something that we cannot affect. We cannot affect your life in a way that uh, changes your learning. And sometimes disease is part of your contract. Hmm. Okay. Thank you very much, Shell. You're welcome. I have not supposed to be here this long. But thank you for all your questions, and I hope I answered them effectively. But I must go, and if someone else will come in my place. Is that permitted? Yes, thank you. Thank, thank you, you for coming. Much. Thank no, you. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening, and I hope you got my message about positive energy, giving it away. I see that it is so important to affect the uh, ascension is that you have to stay positive and a lot of people can bring you down easily so don't let that happen bring out your positive energy and let them deal with your positive energy not you deal with their negative energy thank you for sharing with this show you are welcome now we must go <laughs> be well namaste, namaste. Ugh.